This is Tyler Goodrich, and he's missing. He went missing on November 3rd of 2023. There are some strange circumstances surrounding his disappearance, so I'm going to give you a timeline that came from the Let's Find Tyler Goodrich Facebook page. Timeline of his known events, November 3rd. He went to work in Omaha, confirmed by his co-workers. He was seen on camera at Costco and Lincoln around 5.30 p.m. buying pizza. Law enforcement confirmed that Tyler did go home that night. His car is still in the garage. Between 7.30 and 7.45 p.m., Tyler and his husband have an argument. The husband calls authorities regarding a disturbance. At that point, Tyler leaves the house through the garage. He's on foot. He has a Samsung flip phone and a Ridge wallet. He was wearing gray shorts, a zip-up sweatshirt, and his running shoes. He had a Samsung watch on. You can see this video here of him leaving. This came from a camera around 7.41 p.m. When law enforcement shows up to their house at 8 p.m., speaks to Tyler's husband, Tyler isn't there. And according to a press release, there was no crime, so they left. No further calls or messages from Tyler's phone have been seen. It's believed that it was shut off around 7.45 p.m. The last known ping was at Tyler's home, and that was also the last known sighting of him. On Saturday, November 4th, his husband contacts friends looking for him, but nobody had seen him. A friend of the couple shared a Snapchat location screenshot, the area of Southwest 10th Street and West Van Dorn, which had shown 13 hours prior. The screenshot of the Snapchat was taken at 8.43 a.m. on Saturday, which would put Tyler's phone around 7.45 p.m. the night before. Husband filed a missing persons report at 9.35 a.m. and the property is searched. Friends and family also start searching the area right around that time. Tyler is a runner, so they began searching any trails that he was known to run frequently. The sheriff has searched the property and the home. Search parties have spread all throughout these different trails, and they've used drones, a helicopter, all of those things, and it is being taken extremely seriously right now. I'm going to read an article as well, and there's information in here from Tyler's dad. This article is from NBC News. You never think it's going to happen, especially when they get to be 35 years old, said Lonnie Goodrich. Nobody ever says, hey, someday my kid will be on a milk carton, you know? Tyler is a 35-year-old veteran and a father of two who worked at the Nebraska Department of Corrections. It's two months later, and his loved ones are desperate at this point for answers. He comes from a big family, three sisters, and a younger brother. He was raised in Bennett, Nebraska, moving there when he was just two years old. Lonnie, who's a retired school teacher, told Dateline a story that it says exemplifies who his son is as a person. When he was in elementary school, our cooks always provided cookies to the kids at lunchtime. So Tyler came home one weekend and said, Dad, the cooks made us cookies every day. Can we make cookies for the cooks? So we made cookies so Tyler could take them to the cooks just to repay them for their kindness. He was just a good person. I would say he was always a champion of the underdog. As an adult, Tyler moved to nearby Lincoln, about 20 minutes from Bennett, where his family still resides. He persevered through everything. He pushed himself. He believed in excellence. He strove to be his best at everything. He wanted to get a master's degree, and he got it in 14 weeks and four days. Talk about driven, said his proud father. He always told me he was going to be a warden. He said, I'll end up being a warden someday. So maybe truly that was his ultimate goal. Dateline also spoke with Tyler's friends, one of them Rachel Barth. Tyler and I have been friends since kindergarten, she said. Tyler was one of those people that just made friends easily. 
According to Rachel, Tyler was extremely active and loved being outdoors. He's really into running. He's a marathoner. I would say a decorated marathoner. He took care of himself. About eight years ago, Tyler met Marshall Vogel. We met at a bar here in Lincoln, a gay bar, and I remember walking by him and he was just standing there. We made our eye contact, Marshall said, and that was it for us. Tyler's very driven, he's strong-willed, and if he set his mind to something, he was going to do it, no matter what it was. The pair fell in love and about two years after meeting, got married. I always knew I wanted kids and Tyler did too. We were going to adopt a younger child or foster to adopt, but before their license was approved, Marshall said they got a call from an agency that said we have a 14-year-old that can be there in three hours. The couple talked it over and agreed to foster the boy. It just felt right. Marshall said they began the adoption process about two years ago and they got another call. Our youngest came to live with us before the first adoption was final adding that their children are half-siblings. The adoption for their youngest child was finalized in April. He was an addition to the family we didn't know we needed. Adopting those two, he just loves those boys. He was big on family. In fact, the last time father and son saw each other was at a big family gathering just before Halloween. We always would do pre-Halloween, so the grandkids would come in costume and we'd just get to go see them. I'd spoken with him, you know, on the phone and text, but that's the last time, I think, the last time I seen him, said Tyler's dad. According to Lonnie, nothing seemed unusual with the way his son was acting during the Halloween party. Then came Friday, November 3rd. After spending the day at work, Tyler went to Costco and picked up pizza for the family. Marshall told Dateline he and Tyler were discussing their relationship that night. Things were tough. We both knew we loved each other very much. It was just maybe our marriage wasn't supposed to be forever. We talked about what a perfect night would be. And so Tyler said a movie night with our kids and pizza, just hanging out. So that's what we did. Marshall and Tyler's eldest son was at work. So it ended up just being the couple and their youngest son. Marshall said he and Tyler wound up getting into an argument. I ended up calling 911. When I was on the phone with 911, Tyler left out of the garage. He hasn't been seen since. Dateline also spoke with an investigator, Jeremy Schwartz of the Lancaster Sheriff's Office, who confirmed authorities called to Tyler and Marshall's residence and spoke or, and responded to a domestic disturbance. A 911 call was placed by Marshall to the Lincoln Police Department and referenced an argument between he and his spouse. It was received at 747 on the evening of November 3rd. We dispatched two patrol deputies to the residence to take the report of the domestic disturbance between Tyler and Marshall. As a result of that, those deputies made contact with Marshall. Investigator Schwartz told Dateline they have a recording that Marshall had taken of the argument. It's an audio recording of an argument, or I would be, I would more describe it as a conversation between Tyler and Marshall, said Swartz. The audio has not been released. Authorities were unable to locate Tyler that evening. When deputies arrived, Tyler was not present. The deputies attempted to locate him in and around the property. They left about a half an hour later. Schwartz told Dateline they checked into Tyler's movements to confirm the timeline of events that day. The folks at Costco were great. They provided us video surveillance confirming what we already know. He was picking up pizza. He was dressed well. He didn't look disheveled or unkept. He was just a dad picking up pizza and going home. He immediately went home and gave the pizza to his family. On Saturday, Marshall called again to 911 to report that Tyler had not returned home and was last seen the night before when he left the residence. That call came in at 9.35 a.m. on November 4th. He was wearing gray shorts, a gray partial zip-up running sweater, running shoes. Authorities believe Tyler had both his wallet and cell phone with him before he left the house. Saturday and Sunday, immediately followed by the report, law enforcement worked side-by-side with the family. 
Tyler's dad told Dateline when they heard Tyler was missing, they immediately thought it was unusual. According to Lonnie, his son was very connected online and would never go very long without talking to someone. Tyler couldn't be off his phone for five minutes, he said, and there has been zero communication since Friday the 3rd. No mention of him, no sightings, no anything. He also said that Tyler has never done this before. Well, except one time, maybe three decades ago, when he was little. He did that thing every little kid does, packed a bag one day and told Daddy he was running away, and of course he never got out the door. Tyler's friend Rachel agreed that Tyler would never just take off without telling anyone. She told Dateline that on the weekend he disappeared, Tyler had big plans. He'd signed up for a big marathon in Lincoln the weekend he went missing. So he was missing Friday night, and that Sunday was the Good Life Half Sea, which is a really big deal in Lincoln. It's a team event, so I believe there's three or four other runners on your team, and obviously he didn't make it. Rachel says this is unusual because not only did Tyler love to run, but Tyler didn't like to let people down. On the evening of Saturday, November 4th, most of Tyler's friends and family heard that he was missing and began to look. By Sunday morning, the full-blown search efforts began. The response was immediate and huge. Searchers continued for weeks, and they've definitely tapered away now because nobody has an idea of where to search anymore. They checked the trails that Tyler was known to frequent, but no luck. Nothing. Not a shoe. Not a shirt. Not a phone. Not anything. Nobody has ever used his credit card or debit card. None of that has ever surfaced. There's nothing. We were trying to connect with law enforcement as well, just so they knew we were doing this, you know? And they've been great. They've come out and kind of actually showed us how to conduct a search, Rachel said. You know what to do if we found evidence. They've also worked with the Lincoln Parks and Rec Department, who helped them create a virtual map and mark off which quadrants had been searched in the park. When you got done searching a certain area, you click the link and almost like highlight the area you just walked. And that's really helped us. We shared that information with the sheriff's office so they knew we don't need to cover this portion of wilderness because a hundred of us just did that. Rachel has a background in communications and decided to make this missing persons poster for Tyler. I just jumped on Canva and made a missing persons poster myself with the very limited details that we had. Not long after, she created the poster and they were printed and being passed out. We worked with a local sign company, so there are yard signs everywhere. I mean, we went door to door, handing them out, posting them on companies, you know, anywhere we could. They've had people from around the country showing Tyler's posters. They've even made it that far. They have a trucking company in town and they put the posters in every truck so that they would have them and hand out. The investigator confirmed that authorities have pulled out all the stops in the search for Tyler. We used the Nebraska State Patrol. They used their helicopter. We were able to mutual aid with partnering agencies and they used their helicopter. We have access to drones. We used the drones to go up and try and locate him. We had canines as well, but no success. Through searches with the family, searching nearby areas, and through aerial surveillance, we're just not able to locate him. No personal items at all have been found. The authorities also looked into Tyler's digital footprint. Our lives are connected in so many ways to the digital world. That's one of the first places we started. That could lead to anything and everything, but there's nothing. At this point in time right now, he's just gone dark. Authorities have released the short clip of security footage from a blink camera. It is the belief that the person on the video is Tyler running from the residence. Right now, based on everything we know, that person is Tyler. There was a blink camera that they had in the back of the house that Lonnie's seen. I've seen it. It's now public of what we think is Tyler leaving, said Rachel. However, Lonnie is not confident that the figure in the video is his son. It's very grainy. I mean, we all agree we wish that it was way more clear, and it's very short, maybe a few seconds of someone leaving the back of the house. That's about it. 
According to Lonnie, Tyler and Marshall have a big property. Leaving in that direction would take you towards the barn and the animals. But once you go beyond there, it's terrible. He said the train is difficult to walk through, especially in the dark. Essentially, to get out of that area, you'd have to cross through those tree lines. They're not, I mean, I've walked them more than once. And they're not ones you just walk through because you get caught caught by the thorny locust trees and the briars. Authorities told Dateline that they have reviewed and analyzed additional security footage from the Blink camera. They also canvassed the area and look at other residents' security video from that night. The remaining videos that we've captured do not show Tyler. In the following days, law enforcement took other investigative measures. Interviews have been done with family and friends, verifying information, trying to determine if Tyler maybe went out of state, things of that nature. We've done a lot of the behind the scenes work in addition to actually going out and physically looking. He has confirmed that authorities had access to Tyler and Marshall's property at various times to check and recheck tips. They could come and go as they please, Marshall told law enforcement. We've all listened to enough datelines so they could do whatever they needed to do to figure out where he was. What happened, all of that, and I knew I was one of the first things they needed to do was rule me out. They were all over the place, and I wouldn't change any of that. Marshall says he's faced plenty of speculation. The beginning of it was really rough and terrible. Everyone, they always suspect the spouse. I do know that the sheriff's department was just doing their job. There's a lot of emotion that's driving a lot of what's happening, especially in that first 96 hours. I will tell you, once we were able to work through that situation and talk with Marshall and his attorneys, we have found him to be nothing but cooperative, and that has not changed. Marshall Vogel says the night of November 3rd, he and Tyler were watching a movie with their kids. Tyler had picked up a pizza. And then the rest of the night happened. Um, we got into an argument, and I ended up calling 911, and Tyler left out of the garage. A few days after this was announced by law enforcement, they, they actually told media that you were no longer cooperating with them, but then a couple of days after that, they, they kind of reversed that and said you were. Um, did that surprise you when you heard that originally? Yes, it, it did surprise me. Law enforcement, we let them search the house. They were, I told them that it was an open door. They can come anytime they want. I do understand that um, the spouse is the first suspect, um, and so I understand them putting that pressure, but um, I'm really glad that we have moved past that. But Marshall says it's been tough to see the speculations running rampant online for himself and also for his family, which includes two teenage boys that he and Tyler adopted. Seeing my family um, be hurt by some of the stuff online, it's been, it's been terrible. Where do you think he went when he left? I have no, I, I just have no idea. We just need to, we need Tyler to come home. It's been 47 days now since he went missing. And there's been no pings to his phone. There's been no charges on a credit card. Do you believe Tyler is still alive? I, I refuse not to. <laughs> he needs to come back be a father to our kids. He's, he's my kid's dad. I'm not going to give up hope. Marshall says he's been trying to stay strong for his kids. Life doesn't stop, um, even though it feels like it, it just happened. It, it feels like November 4th, November, th you know, the next day. Um, but we still have parent-teacher conferences and finals and just our day to day. And so that has helped me um, just keep them moving forward because life, life still is going on even though I'm, it stopped for me. I keep thinking Tyler would know that's exactly what I would do is make sure the boys are okay. 
Marshall hasn't been out to search for Tyler. He says he thought it was very important to stay close to their kids to help them cope, but he has been helping when he can. He ordered safety vests for those who were out, and he says he's grateful for people searching. All of the volunteers and friends and family and everyone helping get this message out. Um, it's been, it's been amazing to see Lincoln come together. I asked Marshall if Tyler is out there somewhere and sees this on TV or social media. What would he want to tell him? That there are so many people that love you and just call your dad. The investigator also told Dateline that while the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office is the main investigating agency, they have received help from numerous other agencies. The FBI was called in to provide a brief on the case to ensure our investigation has been thorough. We've dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and just made sure we're not leaving anything out. The support from different areas of Tyler's life has been immense. We contacted the gay community, and they told us they will do everything that they can do. He loved working for the Department of Corrections. That was very clear. His coworkers have been amazing, help with tons of searches and leading the efforts. His old military community have also been helping searching. He was a veteran and proud of it. And you know, still is really close to a lot of the people he met in the military, which has been apparent throughout all of these searches. It's been incredible to know that he has developed such a far outreaching of supporters. It's been beautiful. Husband Marshall Vogel told Dateline he's very grateful for all of the help. It's been great to see all of the volunteers, all of the friends that Tyler works with, his family, complete strangers going out and looking. I'm truly grateful for everything they've done and the Sheriff's Department has done. Tyler knows that I would be here protecting our kids, and it was nice knowing that I could do that and there were people out there helping me. The Facebook page Let's Find Tyler Goodrich was created by friends and family and has over 20,000 followers. It's really hard right now trying to keep social media groups engaged. The advice that I was given was to try to go on the national scale, and that's why we contacted Dateline. At this point, we just need his name out there. And that's what I'm asking you guys to do. If you're listening to this video, and I know that it's gotten longer than I would like, I'm also going to make an Instagram post and a TikTok to make it much shorter as long, along with a YouTube short, but I wanted to give you all of the details. This is clearly a man who is very loved, very cared about. People are extremely concerned. I'm going to post his missing poster on my community wall as well. If you could take the time, no matter where you are, to just share his poster, you can download it from my Google Drive as well. The link will be there. Just share it out to your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikTok, other true crime YouTubers, anybody that you can, so that they can bring him home. Thank you. See you in the next video.